Welcome to the narrow boat that James built. Now, this YouTube channel is going to be a little bit different to some of the other YouTube channels about doing up a narrow boat, and goodness knows there are quite a lot. And I've watched nearly all of them, um, so thank you for so many because you've been uh, really inspirational, given loads of good ideas. But I think most importantly, have kind of shown that it's possible for someone that might not know exactly what they're doing or hasn't done it before. I've tinkered around on boats before, usually GRPs, so um, yogurt pots, so not quite a narrow boat. So this is gonna be my first one, but it's something I've been looking to do and wanting to do for years. The lifestyle really appeals to me, um, and now's the time to go for it. So that's what we're doing. And this is gonna be a bit different, these sets of videos. As I said, this is, um, Unlike many of the other ones where they've got a sail away, it's all nice and new and um, they've been toying with the idea of you know, buying a decent boat or going a sail away into it themselves. And plenty of time, you know, a couple of years, year and a half from start to finish. This is the other end of the spectrum. There is a really tight budget and it's got to be done yesterday. So, um, it, this is going to be a bit different. So, as I said, I've been looking to get an arrow boat for absolutely ages. And when the time came, the marketplace was pretty flat. There wasn't that huge amount of boats on the market, certainly at my price range. And I'm looking at a project boat. Uh, so it's that end of the market. Um, so after much looking around, there was one that I went to see. Um, and it, uh, it was available, uh, so I went up and had a look at it. And this video, this first one, is um, me going around that boat, showing you what the boat is, and um, starting to come to terms with what uh, I'm dealing with. I'll give a few caveats to begin with, because uh, that's going to be needed. I'm a fairly positive person and I feel like uh, I can solve as I go. So this is my approach is with this and pretty much everything else is somewhere in between planning it out to perfection, every minute detail, somewhere between that and absolutely winging it, no idea, make it up as you go along. And Parts of the project, I'm guessing, will be more one than t'other. So we'll have to see. But that tends to be my approach. And that was my approach with buying the boat as well. There's been loads of advice about buying boats, loads of YouTube videos about it. And there is the wrong way and the right way of doing pretty much anything. And uh, this is certainly not the right way to buy a boat. But as I said, this is a budget project. But also this is, uh, the, the timing of things didn't really allow for the scouring of the market and then waiting for a surveyor to, you know, by the time you find a boat and you get a surveyor down there, the boat sold, certainly at this end of the market. So you've just got to sometimes uh, have a punt and just go with your gut instinct. And um, that was what I was going to do because there was no way I was going to be able to get a surveyor around to look at every boat. A surveyor will cost somewhere between four and six hundred pounds. And you just can't do that while looking for every boat because by the time you've done that on three or four boats, you've chucked in two grand and, you know, the boat might only cost you 15. So it's, um, it's, look, it's a gamble like anything, like any major project or big investment. The more you mitigate against risk the better off you're going to be um so buying a boat without a survey is always going to be risky uh, certainly don't advise it but i did go around boats with little hammers and i had a rough idea of what i was looking at but to be honest i didn't uh, i didn't have an ultrasonic um doodah to measure the thickness of the of the metal um it was just does it look all right is it going to float does it does it does it have an engine does the engine work i mean i saw some real shit crackers ones that you would not you know way beyond my remit of what i was prepared or comfortable to to take on so i was only going to look at certain things but anyway so this is the uh this is the boat so let's go and have a look 
So this is the narrow boat. She's a 43 foot Springer built in 1971 and has been listed for sale as a sail away, which basically means ordinarily means lined and ready to fit out um, or maybe just in a shell condition uh, with insulation and ready to fit out and ready to line but uh this one looks like there's a lot of stuff here um insulation looks like it's been put on the walls but um uh, could possibly be improved upon obviously you've got the stern cruiser stern there at the rear obviously uh there's the framework for the bathroom which seems to make sense there's a frosted glass window there although the bathroom does look a touch on the big side good to see there's another hatch i'm chuffed about that so it looks actually it's pretty bright and airy in here through into the extended bow bedroom with a third hatch here at the front so that is really good news there's quite a lot of timber on board which i'm sure i can make use of there is a lot of stuff which is gonna have to go um, i'm sure some of it would be salvageable but it's just too much hassle for all of that so uh, i think a lot of it will go but this looks okay there's a really good generous head height six foot five six foot four something like that uh, but blimey there's so much stuff on here the floor well it does not look good um it feels really weird underfoot all the way through the boat pretty much which is a, a bit worrying but nice spacious cruiser stern that is really good which i'm really wanted so uh obviously it'd be great area for the kids and they can see up here across the roof so yeah that's uh that works out really nicely mushroom vents are in a bit of uh odd positions which is well hey ho and then walking down through the side there above the gunnel, obviously got the shutters open, that doesn't help. But blimey, look how much stuff there is here. I've tidied up a little bit and moved things around to try to find out what it is. Uh, but it is looking pretty good in the around the engine bay. Diesel tank there. Area for the gas locker and the batteries. It's a Lister at SL2, I think, so. But this is the area which requires the attention and a lot of it. So that's going to be the plan for the weekend is to crack on clearing out the inside here. There's definitely a problem with the floor, so I'm going to have to investigate that. But um, thanks for joining me on the tour. Um, if you've enjoyed this or want to um, continue and see how we progress, then please hit the subscribe button and the like button, leave any comments, and I will keep on documenting as I go so that others can see what I'm doing and uh, see how not to do it or do some bits, as the case may be. But as I said, yeah, join me for the next video, which I'm hoping to post in the next couple of days, just to update you on this keep you informed as how it's uh, progressing but I have not got long to go uh, a few weeks for this to be in a position where I can basically stay on it so join me next time thanks bye take care of yourselves